Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming from you and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You see, when we keep repeating this demand, repeating this demand, the whole essence is that it becomes your pattern. It becomes your mindset until you realize that there is daily bread that comes from heaven for you. See, and, and I still find believers that think it's awkward to be expecting miracles every day. I still find believers who feel, oh, I mean, you're supposed to walk. You're supposed to, you know, you can't just sit down there and be expecting God. You know, because of the way, the Bible actually said it, because of the way the truth to be evil spoken of. See, many people withdraw from faith because of the way evil, the truth will be evil spoken of. Can you see that? So there is a way that the truth can be evil spoken of. Think about that, praise God. Truth. But people begin to mount pressure and pressure and pressure, speaking evil about the truth. Just like people began to speak against tithing, people began to speak against offerings. And to the point that even pastors, now not all, some pastors are now um, shy of talking to their congregation about tithes and offerings. See? So, now, because of the way tithing was evil spoken of, you are now not bold enough to teach the truth. Even as I speak, now there's people say, oh, yeah, they've come again, tithing, tithers, tithing takers. You see, the truth is the truth. And I, I recently, I think I, I, I saw an argument now. People are like, show me where Jesus paid tithes or Jesus received tithes. Now, you know, when, when I say people who bring up this argument, they don't even study their Bible. They don't study their Bible. They have no fellowship with the Holy Spirit. They have no um, fellowship with even the Bible. Because if you study if you study your Bible carefully, you will see where Jesus received tithes. Yes, he did. He clearly received tithes. And, okay, show me where he paid tithes. What do you mean? You know Jesus had a treasurer, okay? And John let us know that there are different times Jesus will send uh, Judas to go give something to the poor. Now, that alone tells you that Jesus had a pattern of sending Judas, or Judas had, uh, let me say, the ministry of Jesus had a pattern of giving something out. Now, he said, and he was giving to the poor. Now, what do you call that? Because you don't know the scriptures. Jesus said it, you err because you don't know the scriptures, not the power of God. Now, you don't even know the scriptures. You argue blindly. Show me, show me, show me. It's there. When Jesus sent his disciples to go get the, the donkey so that he would climb on it to go to Jerusalem. You know, I was sharing with you yesterday. I said, when God tells you to do something, he will make the provision for it. You understand? He will make the provision for it. Now, Jesus was to go to Jerusalem. I've heard preachers who even say, Jesus was so poor that even when he needed a donkey, he had to borrow one. He did not borrow any donkey. He took the donkey. Where did you find they returned it? You think they borrowed it? They didn't borrow it. They collected it. Why did they collect it? No, uh, there's another school of thought that say, oh, Jesus was so miraculous that he just sent his disciples to go collect in someone's donkey and the person just said, oh, what? The, the Lord has oh, and then they carried it. You think it's, 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 it's Jesus just stole so That's stealing. That's like using, uh, using the power of God to steal from someone. Have you ever thought about it that way? It's like me sending someone to your house now and say, 
go and collect that man's Mercedes Benz and bring it for me. I want to travel with it. And I don't know you. And, and, and my people just come to your place and just carry on. Just open your gates and start driving the car. Hey, what's going on there? Uh, the Lord have need of it. Uh, and then you're just spellbound. Like, the Lord has need of it. Carry it. Go, go. <laughs> you think? Now, if you're a bystander, you're looking at this whole thing. Now, but what are you going to think? Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you accuse me that these people, these pastors, they've started really, truly, they've started putting something in their mouth. Can you imagine? They just say something, going to carry somebody's car. The person could not say anything. Isn't that what, like, isn't that like what Jesus did? He told his, his, his disciples, go into the streets. And then you find a cult that is tied, which no man has ever ridden up. He said, loosen it. And if anybody asks you, tell them the Lord have need of it and they will let you go. So they went and they were loosening. They found it just like Jesus said. And they were loosening. And people actually stopped them and said, hey, what are you guys doing? And they said, Lord have need of it. I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Let it, you can, you can have it. But what do you think happened there? That was someone's tithe. How, 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 how will I shout this into your heart so that you will understand? It was tight. Moses had instructed them that you will take your tithe. No, the one he called the year of tithing. Check, read, study in Deuteronomy. I won't do that study for you. Because this is not the first time I'm saying it. I won't do that. Go study it yourself. If you can't study it for yourself, Run with whatever you have carried in your heart. That's your business. Praise God. And I say it nicely. It's your business. So Moses had told them the year of tithing that they shall bring their tithe for the whole year and put it in, in their gates. They shall put it in, in their gates, right? And then Moses had said the Levites, the widows, the motherless, they will come and take to their food. So that particular tithe, now there are different tithes Moses told them about. You know, there's the one you eat with your household. You have to go where God commands you to go and you sit down there and eat it, okay? Then there is the one you give specifically to the Levites. In fact, that one, the Levites come to collect it. You understand what I'm saying? They come to collect it. And then there is this one that you do every three, three years. So every three, three years is the year of tithing. So on that third year, you gather your tithe for the whole year. You bring it out and drop at your gates. So people come to collect as much as they want. And that's, that's how God taught the administration of the tithes. That's why I say tithing is a broad subject that you don't even know the purpose. A lot of people don't know the purpose. They just speak anyhow. So Jesus received tithe. So when Jesus was going to Jerusalem, God had to make provision for him. And how did God make provision for him? He made provision by the tithes. So this fellow, he didn't just keep the donkey there. He kept it there for the Lord. So it was his tithe. He, it, has, it was matured enough. Now that's why no one has ever written on it. It was matured enough. So the man brought it out and kept it. And Jesus, being the priest, he was the priest after the order of Melchizedek. You remember. So he sent the disciples to go where God's tithe is. And they collected what they wanted and used it for that trip. So don't tell me Jesus did not receive that. He did. And also, now, on the, you see, why didn't they, why didn't they tighten the New Testament? I know I always tell people, when they say, why didn't they tighten the New Testament? I said, are we in the Old Testament? No. Are we in a further testament? Where are we now? Are we in the New Testament? Here are we are in the New Testament. Okay, I tight. I'm a diligent tighter. So why are you saying they don't tight in the New Testament? Eh? That they should, at least uh, the early church would have tightened, you know, would have seen them paying tight in the New Testament. Who told you they didn't pay tight? No, who told you they didn't pay tight? If they didn't pay tight, you ask yourself a very simple question. How did we get to paying tight today? There must have been examples that those who went before us have seen. Now that's one, that's on one note. On a second note, we have the Holy Spirit who bears witness concerning these things. See? So, before you begin to argue, be careful. God has set a pattern how his children will be taken care of. He set that pattern. And instead of you to open your heart and receive and believe, first of all, 
and receive, you are arguing with God's pattern. I will never forget the day the Lord spoke to me. Many years ago, when, when he had spoken to me about the, the ministry, and he, now I want you to list it. God specifically said to me, he said, you will not do any work. You would, don't, don't open a church. Don't do any work. And so my first concern was like, okay, so how am I going to feed? No, my, that's, that should be your concern too if God is telling you that. And then the Lord said to me, he said, I'll take care of you. How? And he said to me, he said, see, I've got a lot of money on the earth. He didn't say in heaven. He said, I've got a lot of money on the earth that you don't even know about. I said, where? And then the Lord says, the tithe, do you know the tithe belongs to me? I said, yes, but then, now it's been my principle, you know, long ago, never to um, take advantage of the work of the ministry financially now. It's been my mentality long ago. It's not something new, you know. So I am this kind of person that would not accept that a pastor should be paid. It's, it's, it's against my faith. It's against my understanding of ministry. I don't believe that. I said me. Someone can receive an instruction that is different from this. But from where I stand and where I understand the scriptures and where I understand the patterns of God, I don't think um, for me, I should be paid for doing the work of the Lord as it paid here. So uh, my ministry should not pay me. Uh, so, because now these are things, these are things I had to go through early. So how much will they pay me? How much will, more like how much will I pay myself? <laughs> you understand? How much? And I, before the ministry started, I was, and God began to take care of me. So at what point do I switch from the way I live to now depending on the ministry that God says starts, okay? At what point? Now, this is all coming from the very beginning, okay? And God says, don't walk, um, don't start a church, and I'm going to take care of you. So, okay, so how are you going to take care of me? And then he said, I've got a lot of money on the earth that you don't know about. He said, which money? And then he says, the tithes, do you know the tithe belongs to me? I said, yeah, but then the tithe belongs to you. Yes, but there are two problems here. One is he said, I shouldn't start a church. Number two, am I supposed to be depending on, on, on tithes and offering people give? Now, this was my interaction with the Lord. And the Lord said, that's the big mistake you have been making. I said, how? He said, number one, the thought that it's only churches that receive tithe is wrong. Number two, your thought that you have to sit down and be receiving, sitting and receiving tithe and nothing is wrong. Now that got my attention. Praise <laughs> God. That got my attention. It was many years ago, maybe like 20, 2005, 2006. So that got my attention. Like, okay, Lord. Uh, I was like, there's a lot I don't know here. And then the Lord began to teach me. That's when the Lord opened my eyes to see the purpose. Why he received tithe from Abraham and commanded Abraham to tithe in the first place. And showed me, he began to express it, dear Lord. And that's when the Lord taught me, he said, where you've been getting it wrong is in the administration of the tithe. And that's when he said, the money belongs to me, but you guys don't give it to me. You assume you're giving it to me. How? He said, how many times have you asked me what you should do with my money? Eh, but we give it to church now. So, I mean, we'll give it to church. You know your own. No. No. It's mine. And I'm alive. Why don't you ask me? See? Now, this was the foundation. This was the first time the Lord began to teach me in them, apart from what I had known before. Now, I was already um, a, a dedicated tither. 
before this time, okay? But this is when the Lord, now that's the same thing I'll share with you. When the Lord says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples and you will know the truth. So I have been tightened. If you read my book on Titan, you know, um, I had stated there that my dad was the first person that I had preached on Titan and I understood it. Okay. So since then, even before I had any money, I knew that I was very young then. I knew that this is not the thing to ever joke with. I knew. So when I began to receive money, pocket money in school. See, I, I, I remember when, um, as that was before, I think that was before I got into, I think I was in secondary school then. And we had this argument in our youth group. Our students supposed to pay tight. I remember those things. And most, most of the people, they were arguing for and against, and most of them were arguing against that. I mean, they don't earn money, so why should they tight? That thing is supposed to be for people who earn money, okay? And while I was sitting there, and they, it thought just dropped in my heart. And I said, excuse me. Like, okay, what is it? I said, um, should students believe that God can bless them? And everybody said, yes. I said, so if students believe God can bless them, why then do we think students should not pay tight if tithing is connected to the blessing? And everybody was quiet. Now, sincerely speaking, I, I just knew then that tithing is very important. But see, that question that I asked, that reasoning that came to me, came to me during that meeting. And then that was when it was even dawned on me you see, that even as a student, I should tithe. Yes. And I began to do it. Diligently. Diligently. And then, we grew to the point where, of course, God began to take you to levels and levels and levels and levels. Now, he's calling you into ministry. And he's teaching you this one. Say, this is what you are supposed to be doing. You are supposed to ask me concerning my money. I said, dear Lord. That's what made me write the first book I wrote on Titan. Title, Titan, a must, not an option. Now, it's, 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 it's a classic. If you've not read that book, look for it and, and, and read it. It's very, very important. You do read it. And, and by the grace of God, I'm working on another one, you know, to get into deeper things concerning, you know, when, when people tell you not to tithe, they are wicked. They lack understanding, number one. They are wicked. For them to be bold enough to tell you not to. It's because they speak as though they have an authority to say that. But then the question is, on what authority? On what authority? And we're not supposed to tithe. Okay, even in scriptures, you saw where God commanded to tithe. Did you ever see? Where he commanded not to or to stop that did you ever find so if you don't find it how much authority are you using to say people should not tight definitely not from god so when you hear me make a statement that anyone who is telling you not to tight is walking by the spirit of the antichrist you see it's it's because there is no authority from jesus instructing such if there is no authority from jesus instruct and someone is authoritatively telling you not to do something the authority must be coming from somewhere else not christ not god not the holy spirit not the word of god see if it's an assumption you will leave it open say well uh, maybe the scripture is not clear about this let's just seek more light concerning but when someone is bold enough to tell you it is wrong to tight then they are speaking from the authority of the Antichrist. Believe me when I tell you this. And if you're such a one who have held on to those things, go and recheck and repent. Because God never, I always say this when I talk about this. I don't even know why we came into this Titan talk again. I always say this when I say this. I challenge everyone who's against Titan to stand up and say the Spirit of God told him that titan is wrong i challenge anyone to say that help me share this video maybe someone is out there please just help me share this video so that 
Maybe there's one. And then let's hear what he has to say. So when you start talking about arguments, is this one and this one, I challenge. See, as Christians, we're to be led by the Spirit of God. As Christians, we have Jesus as our Lord. Now, if Jesus is our Lord, I'm saying to you with all boldness that Jesus taught me, not just the scriptures now. Jesus has taught me about tithing and it's important every child of God is involved with tithing. However, there is the right way to tithe and that's bringing your tithe to the Lord yourself. See, and let him direct you where to take it to. Now, that is what he taught me. And I know what he thought is true. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I boldly say that and I stand by it. But then if you have received an instruction from the Lord, you can boldly say, the Lord Jesus Christ told me that tithing is wrong. That Titan is in the Old Testament, we should not tithe again. If you can boldly say that, I, I challenge you. Bring it on. Let's be serious with God, not walk by assumptions. If you don't know it, in, leave it. Confess you don't know it. Don't come and say boldly what you don't know because you will eat your words. One day, We'll all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And those things that he did not give you to teach and you were boldly teaching it, you will give account of it. You will. Even those who are, who are teaching on title for their selfish reason, okay, they will give account of God. So why, don't, why are you troubled with them? Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let them do if they feel that's what God has called them to do. Allow them. Our time is up. <laughs> There's a lot I have to tell you on this. Let's walk by the authority of God. Praise God. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.